Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to week three of this AD Manager Plus workshop series, which is being conducted by Manage Engine. Uh, firstly, thank you all for finding some time between your busy schedule and attending today's workshop session. Uh, your participation means a lot to us, and we, I assure you that uh, it'll be very beneficial for you to attend these sessions and be make better use of the product. So before getting into today's session, let me introduce myself. My name is Naveen and I am part of the AD Manager Plus tech team here at AD Solutions. So like I said, this is week three of our series. And uh, last in the last two weeks, we saw some features related to AD Manager Plus. So in the first week, we saw about the reporting functionality of AD Manager Plus. We saw how we could retrieve some vital data from Active Directory with the reports available in the product and how we could perform certain management functions with this, with this data. And then in week three, sorry, in week two, we saw the delegation capabilities of AD Manager Plus. So uh, it's not possible for an administrator to take care of all the Active Directory related uh, actions. So we saw how we could delegate these tasks to our help desk technicians or any other employees and make them perform the tasks. Uh, while restricting the access to certain critical AD data. We, in the last session, we also saw about workflow. Workflow was a request and approval methodology. So here, instead of allowing the technicians direct access to Active Directory, we ask them to raise requests. So once the request is raised, the admins can log in and approve these requests. So only after approval will the action be carried out in Active Directory. So this is oh, these are the topics that were covered in the first two sessions. Now let's see what will be will what we'll be doing today. So today we'll be looking at the user provisioning process with the help of AD Manager Plus. So user provisioning in Active Directory is a key component of any network management. Any network administrator will obviously have to provision users in Active Directory. So we'll be taking a look at that today. So we'll see advanced identity and access provisioning using smart templates and CSV. So, okay, so now let's take a look at what we'll be covering in detail today. So the topics for today's session will be, first we'll see how to create an Active Directory user, how, how to create Active Directory user accounts in bulk using a CSV file in a specific OU along with the desired group memberships. So what, uh, if you were to create a user in Active Directory in bulk, directly in Active Directory, then we'd have to write some, we'd first need a CSV file, then we'd also need some script that needs to be executed to uh, retrieve the data from the CSV file and create the user. So in AD Manager Plus, we'll see how this can be drastically simplified. We won't be writing any scripts. We'll only have a very basic CSV file that will have the bare minimum attributes that are required, like the user's name and password, and we'll see how the user gets created in Active Directory. So this can be done in bulk. Then we'll see how we can make organization specific attributes mandatory without extending the AD schema. So uh, by default, certain attributes are mandatory in Active Directory. So if we want another uh, attribute that is not mandatory in Active Directory to be mandatory only in the product. So while creating the user, that attributes value has to be given, then we can see how that can be done. Say if while creating a user, we have it mandatory that the user's employee number is specified. Then we'll see how that can be done without extending the Active Directory schema. So we won't be touching anything in the schema, only in the product it will be mandatory. Then we'll see how we can detect and handle forest-wide duplicates while provisioning user accounts. So uh, there are many instances where we won't want users to have the same values for certain attributes. Take the employee number for instance. We don't want employee numbers to repeat for users. So user one should have a unique employee number and user two should have one that's different from that. So we'll see how we can handle this dupli these duplicate values in AD Manager Plus. Then we'll see how to standardize the naming formats used for users across the organization. So this is very important. In an organization, we'd want certain attributes, say the logon name, to follow a certain uh, format. Say it could be like first name dot last name. So if the user's name is John Smith, then we'd want the user's logon name to be John.Smith and the email address to be John.Smith as well. So we'll see how these naming attributes can, sorry, we'll see how we can set 
certain formats for these naming attributes and enforce them within the product. Then we'll also see how to provision AD, Exchange and Office 365 accounts from a single window. So we'll be, uh, and all this will be done in a single window. That's the important part here. So in, if, you were, if you were to use the native tools, then we'd have to create an account in Active Directory first. And then we'd have to go to the Exchange tool and then enable a mailbox for that user. Then we'd have to again log into Office 365, the Office 365 admin center, and there create an account as well. So we have to toggle between three windows and it's a bit complex as well. So we'll see how all of this can be done from a single window. We won't have any intermediate steps. In a single window, we'll be creating all of these accounts. And finally, we'll also see how custom attributes can be uh, set in the help of a CSV. So if we have a custom attribute and who, that value has to be set while creating the user, we'll see how that can be done as well with the help of a CSV. Okay, so these are the topics that are going to be covered today. Now let's uh, just let's quickly start off today's session. Okay, so uh, I have a test installation here. If uh, any of if you have a, your own test installation test environment at your end, then you can log into your test environment and perform these actions as I'm performing them. It'll be very easy. It'll be much easier to understand uh, the process if you perform the actions along with me. So for those of you who do not have a test environment, do not worry. I'll be sharing the credentials of this environment for you, with you. So if you look at a chat box, you'll see that I have shared the link. And the, so the link is uh, admp.cloudapp.net. So if you go to this URL, you'll be greeted with this login screen. So the username will be admp which I've sent in chat as well. And the password will be workshop with W in caps. So I have sent the details in the chat box. If you check your chat box, you will see the username, password, as well as the URL. Another important thing to note is the third option, that is the log on to drop down. You have to select AD manager plus authentication. Uh, not workshop, but AD manager plus authentication. Okay, so the username is ADMP, the password is workshop with W in caps, and log on to, you should select AD Manager Plus Authentication. So I'll go ahead and log in myself. So you get, you all can log in as well. Okay, let's try that again. Okay. So now I've logged into my AD Manager Plus account. So uh, like we've seen, so we've seen previously that once we log in, we'll be greeted with the products dashboard. The dashboard, as I said, gives us a quick glance of our Active Directory environment and gives some vital stats about it as well. Now in the last two sessions, we saw the AD Reports tab as well as the AD Delegation tab and the Workflow tab. So these three tabs were covered in our previous sessions. Now today we'll be covering user provisioning in Active Directory. So user provisioning comes under the AD MGMT tab, that is the Active Directory Management tab. So I'll click on the AD MGMT tab. Now once I click on this, we have a, we have a lot of uh, management actions that can be performed. So if you look at the left side, we have user management, computer management, group management, contact management, etc. We have uh, all these management operations can be done with AD Manager Plus. So today we'll be taking a look, we'll be looking at the user provisioning process with AD Manager Plus because users are the most important object in Active Directory. So we'll be looking at how the users are provisioned in AD Manager Plus. So let's start off by creating a very simple user with the help of the product. So all I'll be doing is creating a user in Active Directory with the help of AD Manager Plus. So for this, what I do is, I first go to the AD MGMT tab, then I, under user management, I click the create single user option. So now I want to create a single user. Okay, so now you'll notice that a lay, that a layout has uh, been generated. So it's basically like a form. It asks me, I have the list of attributes to the side and text boxes with 
uh, ask me for the values. So I just have to enter the details of my user in these boxes and then I can click create. So then my user will be created in Active Directory. And if you look at the top, there are certain tabs as well. So all the general attributes will be listed here. Then we have the account tab. So the account related attributes, that is the password, the group memberships, etc. will be listed in this tab. Similarly, all these tabs will contain uh, those respective attributes. So we can fill out all these values, whichever ones are necessary, and then click on the create button to create the user in Active Directory. So let me create a user in Active Directory first. So the first step is to specify the first name of the user. So I'll just keep the name as test and the last name as user 01. Okay, so the first thing that you would have noticed is I have only given two attributes, that is the first name and the last name. But other attributes like the logo name, the pre-Windows 2000 logo name, etc. have all gotten auto-populated. So how did this happen? How is me specifying only the first name and last name uh, setting values for the other attributes? Well, this is because of the template that I have selected at the top here. So if you look at the top, there's a thing, there's something called selected template. So right now, the system default template has been selected. So what the template does is, it uh, helps me auto-populate my attributes. So if I want the logon name to be of a certain format, like first name plus last name, that as is the case here, then I can set that here in the template. So the, we'll be looking at how to create templates in further detail later on. So now we'll just, just know that the templates help in auto-populating the the fields in Active Directory. Uh, okay, so there seems to be a... So this... Uh, there seems to be a issue with the logging in. So if you go to the link that I specified, the username is ADMP and the password is workshop with caps and the Log on to, you should select as AD Manager plus authentication. So, if you have any doubts with that, <clears throat> okay, so um, let's continue here. So we have the, yeah, so the templates basically help in auto-populating the data. Now, when we, so, when we, when we see how the templates are created, at that time we'll see how we can set certain formats for the name, these naming related attributes. Also, we can see how the, the other attributes can be set as well. So now I'll continue with my user creation process. I'll go to the account tab. Now in the accounts tab, I have uh, more attributes here. So the other attributes that I can see are the password. Now we have certain uh, options for setting the password. Like for instance here, it asks me whether I want to generate a random password or I can type my own password or keep the password same as my user logon name or leave the password as blank. Well, the last option is, uh, is we have a, a leave the password blank, but it's uh, not recommended that you use this option since for very obvious reasons. You want a user to always have a password and we don't, so that the account isn't vulnerable to uh, attacks. So I will be uh, typing my own password. So I'll set a password here. Okay, so now I have set the password. Now the next thing is account properties. So here it asks me whether the user must change password as next logon. So if this option is selected, then the user, the next, when the user logs on for the very first time, he'll be prompted to change his password. And we have other options as well, like user cannot change password. In that case, if this option is selected, then the user will not be able to change his password at all. 
Okay, so these are uh, some other account related properties related to the password and we can select whichever ones are necessary for us. Now let's go back to the top. Now the top we see an attribute called member of. So the member of attribute specifies which groups this user is going to be a member of. So if we click on the little pencil icon here, we can edit the group memberships. So currently only the domain users group is selected. So if you want to add certain groups to, for this user to be a member of, we can do that here. So we click on add groups and select whichever groups we want this user to be a member of. So then we can click OK. So now the user which is created will be a member of the following groups. So I click OK. <coughs> okay. Uh, so uh, there's a question that was asked that if we select random password, how will that password be, uh, how will we see that password? Well, I'll explain that in some time. So uh, please hold on for some. I'll definitely, I'll tell you how that random password will be displayed soon. Okay, so now the log, then we can also set a logon script. So we just specify the logon script here. Also, we can set a profile path as well as the home folder. So home folder can be specified on local path or in a network path here. Okay. Okay. So now uh, let's take a look at the other tabs. Next is the contact tab. Now in the contact tab, we have other contact related attributes like the uh, home phone, pager, etc. So these are all phone numbers and then we have the address attributes as well. And then uh, we look here at the right, we have title, department, etc. So all of this can be specified as we desire. So depending on our uh, requirement, we can specify all these values. Now the next thing is the exchange tab. So this is uh, one. So this is where we uh, see one of the most powerful features of AD Manager Plus. Till now we only saw how to set the Active Directory related attributes. That is only AD. So now we'll see how we can enable a mailbox for this user as well. So if we click on the Exchange tab, we have two options here: Mailbox enabled user or Mail enabled user. So if you want a Mailbox enabled user. We can click on that option here and then we have more uh, fields that are displayed. So now if I, now we can go ahead and specify the fields. So the first thing it asks me is for the mail server name. So I specify the mail server as well as the mailbox stored. So these are uh, the, at the fields that are marked as red are mandatory attributes and have to be filled in while uh, creating the user. So we can go ahead and fill in those details. And if we go down, we have other options as well for our exchange mailbox. So all of these options can be specified while creating this user and enabling the mailbox. So that is about exchange. Then we also have the option for enabling a remote mailbox for this user. So if we want the user to have a remote mailbox enabled, that can be done from here as well. Then we have the terminal related attributes terminal attributes. So those uh, details can be filled here. All these, uh, whichever ones are necessary, we can fill and then click on the create button. So the next tab is uh, uh, Skype or link. So if we have Skype or uh, link configured for, a, if you want to configure users to have Skype or link, then we can do that from here as well. So we could just have to select the Skype for business slash link server. So if a link server is configured in our environment, then that will be displayed here and we can make the selection. So we'd have to select the link server as well as the SIP URI format. So we specify these two values here and then these uh, other values like telephony, conference, conferencing policy, etc. And in, then we will be able to enable Skype as well for this user. So we have enabled so far we've seen how we can create the user in Active Directory, enable a mailbox in Exchange, as well as enable Skype or link for that user as well. Next is the Custom Attributes tab. We'll take, come back to the Custom Attributes. 
Now the third thing is Office 365. Now if we have Office 365 configured for a domain, that is we have one of our domains that is in AD that is linked to Office 365, we can configure that in our product and then we can also then we can create the user in Office 365 as well. So when we're creating a user in Office 365, it asks us it asks us for two things. That is the user creation method. Whether the user should be created with directory sync enabled or create the user without directory sync enabled. So if directory sync is enabled, then the there will be a link between the Active Directory user and the Office 365 user. So changes made in Active Directory will be reflected in our Office 365 environment. But if we do not have such a link, then we can click on the Create Without Directory Sync option. In that case, we'll just have a user only in Office 365 that is not linked to Active Directory. Then we can specify the licenses as well. So what are the licenses we want to give for our Office 365 user? So we can specify these options. And the most important thing is to check the Office 365 box at the top. So if we do not check this box, then a user will not be created in Office 365. So if we want to create the user in Office 365 as well, we have to click on this Office 365 checkbox. Okay, so we so that's how we give all the details for our single user. And once we're done with this, we can go ahead and click create. So if we click create, then the user will be created in Active Directory as well as the we'll have a mailbox enabled for that user. And we can also uh, enable Skype for that user and create the user in Office 365 as well. So all of these operations are being performed from a single window without any scripts being involved. So it's much simpler than using the native tools because otherwise we'd have to log on to the Active Directory console, create a user and then log on to Exchange and then enable a mailbox for that user and then finally log on to the Office 365 admin center and create a user from there as well. So this avoids all of that and it's replaced by the simple process by which we can do it all in one step. So we can click create and the user will be created in the domain that we have selected. Okay, so that is the basics of how we create a single simple user in Office 3, sorry, in Active Directory. Now let's take a look at the custom attributes. Say we have a custom attribute that needs to be specified while we create the user. That can be seen from here, the custom attributes tab. So if we want to add a custom attribute, how can we add custom attributes to uh, AD Manager Plus? So the first thing that we have to do is, first we have to add the custom attribute to the product. So how do we add the custom attribute to the product? So we go to the admin tab. Now in the admin tab, we have the LDAP attributes option here. So this is how we configure a custom attribute in AD Manager Plus. Okay, so we can add, this is the list of all the custom attributes that have already been configured here in AD Manager Plus. So we'll see how to create a new custom attribute. For that, we click on the add attribute. Now uh, we just have to give in the details of our attribute. So the display name we can say as test attribute and the LDAP name as well. So these values, so you should specify the correct values here. So the LDAP name of the value in Active Directory has to be specified here. Here I'm only giving a test uh, attribute, so this is not actually present in Active Directory, but you must specify an LDAP name that is present in your Active Directory environment for it to work correctly. Then we can specify our data type. So for data, we have a variety of options for data type. It could be a string, an integer, boolean, etc. So we can make the choice accordingly. So I'll keep it as a string. Next is to choose which reports the attribute will be associated with. So whether we want it to be present in the user reports or the group reports or computer reports, etc. So which reports we want this attribute to be present in. So I'll click on user reports and then the associated managements as well. So whether we want the attribute to be present in user creation, computer creation, etc. So whichever uh, management operations we want this attribute to be present in, we select those here. 
So for now, I only want the attribute to be present in user creation. So I click on user creation. Now finally, I just click add. So now the attribute has been successfully added to the product. And okay, so yeah, now we, we can see that attribute test attribute has been added to the product. Now how now let's see how we can set a value for this attribute. So for that we go to AD management and again we have to create a user. So we go to create single user. Now the name I kept for my test attribute was test attribute. Let's see if it has been added to our layout now. So if I go to the custom attributes tab, you can see that a uh, new field is present called test attribute. This is the so this is the attribute that I have specified in the admin tab and we can create uh, set or uh, uh, set any appropriate value here. So if we select set a value for a test attribute here, the user will be created in Active Directory and the attributes value will also be set. Okay, so there was a question about how a randomly generated password can be viewed in Active in AD Manager Plus. Well, if we click on the random password option, so I've set uh, some basic attributes. I just create the user test user, so 04, and I'm going to check, check the random password option. So only two options have been selected here, and I can click create. So now the user is being created in Active Directory. So you'll see that the password has been displayed here. Uh, it's displayed here. Then we have an option for hiding the password in the, from the UI. So if you explore the product, the, under the admin tab, we have an option to hide the password from, a, in, from the UI. So if that option is selected, the password will not be visible here. So in that case, how would we view the password? Well, ev every operation that is uh, performed in AD Manager Plus will be audited in our uh, audit reports. So if we click on the audit reports, uh, so under AD delegation, we have the audit report. So uh, which we can see here that the user creation process has been audited for us. So if we click on details, we get a list of the details that were performed and uh, the password will be can be specified here. Okay. So if the password is, if we have that option selected, then the password will be displayed here. Okay, now uh, continuing with the session. So now we've seen how we can create a single user in Active Directory. Not only was the user created in Active Directory, but we also were able to enable a mailbox for that user and also <coughs> uh, enable the user with Skype and the, uh, and create the user in Office 365. Now we'll see how we can uh, create users in bulk. And we'll also see how the user creation templates can be used for specifying certain values. Okay, now uh, we'll now go have a look at the user creation templates. Okay, so under AD management, under user management, we have the user creation templates. So like I said before, the user creation templates help in auto-populating the values for certain fields. And we can also set default values for some fields as well. So if we click on the user creation templates, we first get a list of all the templates that are configured in AD Manager Plus. So we can go ahead and create a new template. Okay. Um, yeah. So now uh, the sorry. So now the first thing you'll notice is uh, the first name, the initials, and last name do not have any values present here. So this means that if we were to set this template, then these values would be blank by default. 
if we want to set a value for these attributes, we can go ahead and do that here. So if we want the first name to be uh, have a default value of test, then we can specify that value here. So that can be done for other attributes. Now if we look at the logon name field, the logon name field says first name plus last name. Now this is the this is how we specify uniform naming formats across our organization. So whatever values are present in first name and last name, these two values will be combined to give our logon name. So if the first name is John and the last name is Smith, then the logon name format will be John Smith at workshop.com at domain.com. So we can choose whichever naming format we want from our list. So if we want it to be first name dot last name, then the if the first name was John and the last name was Smith, then we'd have John dot Smith at workshop at dot admanagerplus.com. So we can specify whatever format we want from this list. But say we have a format in mind, but it is not given here in this drop down list. Well, in that case, we can create our own custom naming formats in AD Manager Plus. So for creating our own custom formats, we click on the Create Your Own Naming Format link. So if we click on this, this we can create our own naming formats here. So under the Admin tab, we have something called Naming Formats. So this is the list of all the naming formats that are currently present. If we want to add our own naming format, then we just click on Add Format. So we can give a name for the format. So we give a name. And next is to specify the data. So if I want, we can specify which attribute to put here. So I want all the characters of my first name, followed by, uh, say, then we can specify the next one. Uh, say a, a dot. And then I want my, uh, first name, then I want the last letter of my last name. So I specify the last one character. So what I've done here is I've created a test naming format in which uh, the, which will contain the first name dot the last character of my last name. So if the name was John Smith, it would be John dot uh, Smith, so John dot H. So that is the last character of my last name. So we can specify which, whatever naming formats we want here. Then we can click on save. So if we click on save, then this naming format will be saved and this can be added in our template to be used later on. So now let's go back to the creation of templates. So I'm creating a new template. Okay, so that is how we can specify uniform naming formats in our organization. If we want the logon name to be of a certain format, then that can be, we can create a naming format for that. And with that, we can create, and with that, we can, uh, and we can enforce that across the organization. So the pre-Windows 2000 logon name format can also be selected. So here it is given as same as logon name. So the value will be whatever is, present here will be given here as well. So similarly, all the naming attributes can be given values like this. Okay, so now we'll see how we can make certain attributes mandatory uh, in AD Manager Plus without extending the schema. So in Active Directory, the employee ID might not be a mandatory attribute. So, but suppose we need to have, we need the user that is created to have an employee ID. In that case, we need to make this attribute mandatory. So how can this be done? Okay. Okay. So, how, let's see how we can make these attributes mandatory. So if the employee ID has to be mandatory, then how, how will we go about doing that? So under user creation templates, we have an option called enable drag and drop. So if we click enable drag and drop, we, we get this uh, field tray to our left. 
Now let's see how to make the employee ID mandatory. So we hover on to the employee ID and go to the edit icon. So here we have an option for editing this icon, this attribute. So if I, now I have a list of options here. So under the options, I can make it mandatory, make it read only or none. So what this means is if I click on the mandatory option, that means this attribute is now mandatory. Any uh, user cannot be created without this value, without setting a value for this attribute. If I make this value read only, that means uh, I cannot set any value for this attribute. Basic, so, yeah, so the if this template is set, then this attribute cannot be changed. Only the default value that is provided, if any, will be uh, available. So if we enter a default value here, then that will be given for this this uh, employee ID and it cannot be changed. And none means that it can be changed and modified and it's not mandatory. So I'm going to make this field mandatory. Okay. So now I click done. Now you notice that there's a red asterisk next to the employee ID option. That means that the employee ID is now a mandatory attribute. So a user, if, a, if this template is selected, then a user cannot be created without this employee ID being set. So similarly, any of the attributes can be made mandatory. So if you want the telephone number to be mandatory, we click on edit and then uh, click set it as mandatory here and then click done. So this can be done for any of the options below. Okay, now uh, the use of, so let's give a practical use case of this template. We'll be, have uh, users who are joining the organization at all times. So we will probably want to delegate this template to our HR associate. So what the HR will have is, the HR will have some basic attributes of the user, say the username, the user's first name and last name. So with this information, the HR will want to create users in Active Directory. Now the HR will only have permissions to create users in Active Directory. We won't want them to modify, like enable mailboxes or create Office 365 users, etc. So if that is the case, we will want the HR to have access only to certain specific attributes. So how can we uh, allow them to have access only to some attributes and deny access to other attributes? Well, if we hover onto the fields again, we see an option to make silently active or delete. So if we make silently active, then it's similar to, uh, <coughs> so the field will not be visible to the user. Whatever default value is given for this field, that will be sent to Active Directory. So if we give a default value here for description and then make it silently active, then it will not be visible during the time of creation and whatever default value is present will be given. Now say we do not want the person creating the user to have access to the description attribute. Well, in that case, we can delete the attribute entirely. So if I click on delete, it asks me to confirm the deletion and I click OK. So now the attribute has been deleted and it is moved to the field tray here. Similarly, any of the attributes can be deleted. Suppose the office attribute should not be changed, it should not be set, it can be deleted from here as well. Now say I want the attribute back. That is description should not have been deleted. I want it back in my layout. Well, in that case, I can just click on it and drag it back into the layout. So if I drag it back, so I specify my values here and click done. So now description has been added back to the layout. So that is how we can delete certain fields. Suppose we want to delete an entire tab. That is we, don't, we do not want the technician to have access to the exchange tab as, at all. In that case, we can click on the delete tab option here. So we click delete tab. So now the entire tab is removed from the layout. So if we want, okay, so similarly other tabs can be removed as well. So the remote mailbox tab will be deleted here. Similarly, I do not want them to have access to the terminal tab. So whichever fields are not necessary, those can be removed from the layout. Okay, so I'm going to create a template that only has the basic Active Directory attributes. None of the other uh, attributes like Exchange, etc. will be available for this technician. So I click OK. 
So now only the general, the accounts tab and the contact tab are available. Okay, so these are the only tabs that are available to the technician that uses this template. So let's give a name for our template. So I'll name it as test template for technician and I click save. So now the template has been successfully saved. Let's see how we can make use of this template while creating our users. So let's create a single user again, but this time we will make use of our template that we have created. Okay, so now under the selected templates, I click on change and I can search for my template that I created. So I, so this is the template I created, test template for technician. I click on OK. <clears throat> so you notice that all the previous tabs have been replaced with only the general accounts and contacts tab. So now whoever now this template is selected, then that technician will have access only to these attributes. So only these attributes can be modified and when we create the user, only these values will be sent. <clears throat> okay, so that basically covers the single user creation part in Active Directory. We saw how we could uh, create a simple user in Office, sorry, in Active Directory, enable a mailbox and then create this, create a linked user in Office 365 as well. <clears throat> then we saw how with the help of user creation templates how we can how we can enforce uniform naming formats and prevent uh, <clears throat> uh, yeah and make certain fields mandatory in AD manager plus without extending our active directory schema so when the when certain attributes are made <clears throat> mandatory in AD manager plus they are made mandatory only in the product in active directory there is no modification to the schema at all. Okay, so that is single user creation. Now let's move on to bulk user creation. So creating users one by one is a bit of a headache since we'll have to load this. Uh, <clears throat> so, so if you want to create 10 users, we'd have to give the details of all 10 users each time and then create them individually. So if we do not want to do this, we want to create users in bulk. How would we do this? So let's take a look at that now. So for creating users in bulk, there are two things that we need. The first is a CSV file and the second is the user creation template. So we have already seen how a user creation template can be created and how this can be imported at the time of creating the user and, uh, and how, it help, how it's helpful to us. Now let's take a look at, so that we'll take a look at the second thing that's required. The second thing is a CSV file. So this is my sample CSV file here. <clears throat> this CSV file will be required for creating my user. So the first line of the CSV file just specifies the attributes that are going to be present in this file. So the given name, comma SN, comma password are the attributes that will be specified in this CSV. So given name stands for first name, SN stands for last name, and password is the password of that user. So the next, the corresponding lines of this file will tell me what are the values for these attributes. So for each and each new line corresponds to a new user that is going to be created. So this first line means that I want to create a user in Active Directory whose first name is test and the last name is user underscore zero one and password is password at one two three. So that, so this, if I were to import this CSV, one user would be created with the following attribute, with the following values. Now let's see, now I'll add another user as well. So I'm going to create a second user whose first name again is test and last name is user underscore zero two and another password as password at one two three. Okay, so this is the CSV file. The first name specifies the attribute values and the Next to uh, the corresponding lines specify the values to be set for those attributes. So the first name will be test, last name will be user underscore zero one, and the password is password at one two three. Now you might ask me, if I'm going to be setting the first name in Active Directory, why have I specified it as given name here instead of directly writing as first name? 
Well, the these uh, attribute these are the LDAP attributes for this uh, at, for this uh, for the first name. So the LDAP attribute for the first name is given in. Only if I specify the give the LDAP attributes will Active Directory know what <coughs> what values are being sent. So if I were to replace this with say first name <coughs> and try creating the user, then I, the Active Directory environment would not know what this first name is. <coughs> only if I give it as only if I give given name will it be taken as the first name of my user. Now these are not the only attributes that can be specified in our CSV file. There are many other attributes as well. To <coughs> if you want a list of all the attributes that can be given in our CSV file, we have that in our help document as well. So if we go to the product and the top right, we have a help link. So if we click on the help link, we redirect to our help document. Now in this, we have so if you look at the left, there's a CSV import option here. <clears throat> so if you go to create users using CSV, then there's something called list of LDAPs, LDAP attributes supported by AD Manager Plus. So if we click on that, we get a list of all the LDAP attributes that are supported by AD Manager Plus. So all these can be given as headers of a CSV and the corresponding values can be provided uh, on the ne next lines. So if you wanted to say, specify the mail email address of our attribute of our user then the mail the mail would be have to be present in the header of our csv so we would give it as mail it have to be on the same line so we give mail and the next line would contain the email address of our user so email at domain.com similarly we'd have to do this for uh, all our users as well so any attribute can be specified and the appropriate values given in our CSV. So that is uh, so that is what a CSV file is. Now let's see. So once we have created a CSV file with the LDAP headers and the corresponding values, let's see how we can create these two users in Active Directory. Well, for doing that, we go to the product, and in the product we go to AD Management. Under AD Management, we have User Management. And there we see the create bulk users option. So we click on create bulk users. Okay, so now we have to import our CSV file. For importing our CSV file, we click the import option here and then choose a file. So then we browse our computer and then locate our CSV file and import it. Then we click OK. So now the CSV is being imported and the appropriate values are being validated as well. So important thing to note here is we are not only setting, I mean, getting those uh, attributes that we specified before, we are also uh, validating if those attributes are correct as well as applying the template. So I had given only given name and SN in my CSV along with my password. But we'll notice that the user principal name, SAM account name, display name, etc. have all gotten auto-populated. Like I said, this is because of the template that we had specified. So in the system default template, if we give the first name and last name, then the user principal name, SAM account name, display name, etc. will all be automatically populated with the values, with these values here. So this is because of our naming format being first name plus last name. So if you want to edit certain value here, then we can just click on that and then edit it here. So it's so these values are not uh, fixed. We can always edit whichever ones we think need to be changed. Now say we do not want to apply this template. That is, uh, what if my username is not of this format? That is first name plus last name. What if it is last name dot first name? Well, for in that case, we'd have to change our template. So whichever, so we'd have to create a template with the correct naming formats present and then imp select that template here. So previously I created the test template for technician. So I'll click on use that template here. So now if there's any issue with the users that are, that are present. So we have a validation status here. So if when the CSV file has been imported and the template was applied, if there is some issue, then that will be given here. 
Now if you remember in the template I had specified that the employee ID is a mandatory field. Now after validation it's telling me that the employee ID is specified as mandatory but is not present in my CSV or in the template. So I, it will not allow me to create the users unless I go and fix this issue. So whatever, uh, so if there are any errors in our CSV then those will be displayed here in our validation status. So I'll go ahead and use the system template itself. So in system template the employee ID is not mandatory so it does not give me any errors here. So now I just have to click next. Now the next step is to choose my container like which organizational unit should this user be created in. So I have a list of all the organizational units in my environment. I can choose the appropriate one here. The, another option for selecting the container is in the CSV file itself. So if we were to give an OU name if we gave the header as OU name, we could specify the distinguished name of our OU. So whatever our OU was, that could be specified here in our CSV and that imported. So in that case, the users will be created in the OU specified in our CSV, not in this OU here. So now since I have not specified any OU in my CSV file, I, have, I can choose my OU here. So I choose the appropriate one and then click create users. So now the users are being created in Active Directory and the status will be displayed once they have been created. So the users have been successfully created so the message is displayed here. Now this is only for creating a user in Active Directory. Suppose we want to enable the use, user's mailbox then how will and in Exchange and we also want to create the cor corresponding user in Office 365. So we want to do all of this in bulk. How would we go about doing this? Well, for this again, it depends entirely on the user creation template. <clears throat> okay, so there's a question that has been asked, the ask, say, stating that, what if the users have to be created in different OUs? So, like I said, that can be done with the help of your, of your CSV file. So, if in the CSV file, if we Okay, so in the CSV file, if we give our OU name here, OU name attribute, and then the corresponding lines, we can give our OU name. Suppose the OU first is OU1. Uh, then, so this is the, so this first user will be created in my OU1, and for the second our second user, I can specify a different OU. So now, if this is my CSV file then the first user will be created in the container OU1 and the second user will be created in OU2. So we can specify whichever OU we want and the user will be created only in that organizational unit. So it's not necessary that all of them will be need to be created in a single OU. We can have multiple OUs as well. So for doing that, that we, we do it with the help of our CSV. So <clears throat> okay. Okay. So now let's go, get back to the creating users in bulk in Exchange as well as Office 365. Well, in our user creation templates, we just browse to the template that we created. So that was test template for technician. So we want to add the Exchange tab back to this uh, layout. So I, so for adding a tab back to the layout, we have an option here called at the left for adding a new tab. So we click on that, we give a name for the tab and the tab type. So this is an exchange tab. So I name it as exchange. Okay, so now the exchange tab is being added to my layout. So I want to create a mailbox enabled user with this layout. So I can select a exchange server here and then I also have to select a mailbox store. Okay, so now all the mandatory attributes have been specified for my exchange. So now if I were to import this template at the time of creating my user, in that case the user would be uh, user would be created in Active Directory as well as a mailbox 
created for that user in exchange as well okay okay, okay. so that so again we go to create users in bulk and then if are importing this uh, template so we ch choose our appropriate template and then we import our csv so that so then the user will be created in ad as well as in exchange so similarly we can do the same for office 365 we just include the office 365 attributes set a default value or we can yeah set a default value in the template and then uh, create the users here now uh, I also uh, said uh, we could set the custom attributes in single user creation so at the time of, uh, if you want to set the custom attributes in bulk user creation as well well we just have to specify the LDAP name of our custom attribute in our CSV so the custom attribute that I created was called test attribute so I set it here and then give whatever value I want here. So now my custom attributes value will be set with this value here. So this, so any like, so as I said, any attribute can be specified in my CSV header, and the appropriate value will have to be given in the corresponding lines for each user. So if we had a hundred users, then we could create a file CSV file with these users, and then just import it in our product. And then click on and then create the user so it's much simpler than going into writing complex script and then running that script in active directory and then creating the user all we have to do is have a simple csv file with the basic attributes that we want create a template which will help in auto populating the values as well as setting some default values for our attributes and then click on next choose a container and then create the user in active directory Okay, so that basically, so that concludes our uh, bulk user creation process and today's workshop session as well. Let's give a, I'll just give a quick recap of the things that we have covered today. So we started off by seeing single user creation. In user creation, <coughs> okay, so we started off by seeing single user creation. We saw how a user could be created in Active Directory create a mailbox in exchange, enable link, as well as create the user in Office 365 as well. So all of these operations were done from a single window without the use of any scripts. So it seems it's definitely much simpler than using the native tools. Then we saw, uh, we took a look at the user creation templates. So with the help of user creation templates, we can set certain attributes as mandatory, check for, uh, set our custom attributes, as well as many other uh, operations like so if we do we can also hide some attributes from our users as well so all of this can be done in our user creation templates then we also saw how to create users in bulk so if we want to create users in bulk we need two things that is a csv file as well as a, a template so the csv file uh, format is like this so we'll have the at the LDAP headers at the top and the corresponding values in the lines that follow. And then this CSV has to be imported in the product, this, the template applied, and then users can be created. So that concludes today's workshop series. I'd like to thank all of you for uh, attending today's session. Okay. Yeah. So once again, thank you all for attending today's session. Now, uh, next week's session will be uh, focusing on the user modific user management operations in uh, Active Directory. So once we've created the user in Active Directory, that's not the end. We have there's definitely much more that follows. We have like operations like resetting passwords, deleting users, disabling users applying group memberships, etc. So all of this can be done in AD Manager Plus with the bulk user management operations. So we can, under AD Management, we have the bulk user modification here. So we will be taking a look at these operations in our next workshop session. So please do attend that to uh, get to understand these actions and 
be able to use them better. So uh, once uh, at the end of this workshop session, we, you'll all be receiving some feedback mailers. Please do fill out the feedback forms and get return, send them back to us. Your feedback is very valuable to us and it helps us improve our sessions which benefits the which benefits you the attendees. So once again thank you all for joining today's session and you all have a nice day. Mm -hmm.